Thank you for the introduction, Lauren. Uh, as, uh, as Lauren mentioned, my name is Praveen, and I'm a PhD student at Cornell, advised by Professor Nate Foster. In this talk, I'll be presenting Yates, which is a system for rapid prototyping of traffic engineering systems. This is a work done with, with collaborators from Cornell, CMU, and USI Lugano. Let's start with an example of a wide area network and traffic engineering in such a network. A traffic engineering system has to perform two tasks. First, it has to decide which set of paths to take from a source to a destination. And second, it has to decide how, how the traffic should be load balanced among these paths. Now assume that you, as the network operator of this wide area network, want to measure the performance and improve the, improve the performance of this wide area network. Let's assume that you have configured the network to use ECMP, which stands for equal cost multipath. And in this case, traffic is split equally across multiple shortest paths. You can mon monitor the performance of the network by looking at various performance metrics. And let's say in this case, we are looking at maximum link utilization or maximum congestion to quantify the performance of the network. By measuring this metric, you can see that ECMP performs reasonably well when the, when the network demands, demands are low. But during peak periods, you find that some of the links are saturated, and as a result, traffic is dropped. So might, you might wonder that there might be some other traffic engineering system that you might implement, which could improve the performance and remove such bottlenecks. For example, you might look at CSPF, which stands for Constraint Shortest Path, and it picks path based on available link capacities. Now, let's say even if you decide to use CSPF, there are many different knobs that you might have to tune. For example, with CSPF, you might have to decide what link weights to set. Now, before you go ahead and make these changes to your network, you want to get some assurance that the network performance is going to improve. At the very least, you want to be sure that the performance of the network is not going to degrade compared to what, what it, it currently gets. Now, now, in case of CSPF, you just had to look at link weights. But if you are using some other traffic engineering system, you might have to play around with a lot of different knobs. Now, this example showed the difficulty in picking up uh, or in deciding between just a couple of choices. But in practice, you have many more choices of traffic engineering systems, ranging from distributed, uh, conventional distributed systems such as OSPF, CSPF, and ECMP, to more optimal solutions based on multi-commodity flow, such as MCF. In fact, traffic engineering has remained an area of active research. And over the years, many different traffic engineering systems have been proposed. Each of these systems optimize for different, uh, uh, different performance and robustness criteria. And while each of these approaches promise impro impressive performance, it is difficult to compare them on a level playing field. Replicating the results from these systems is not trivial, because the corresponding evaluations are based on proprietary topology and traffic matrices which are not available to the public. So how do you, as a network operator, decide which is the best approach? Now you might ask, why is this important to the saucer community? Well, as network researchers, we would like to scientifically understand the various trade-offs in traffic engineering and analyze uh, these different traffic engineering approaches. For this, we need the ability to prototype these different traffic engineering systems and compare them on a level playing field. And currently, there is no good way to do this. The resources needed to implement, analyze, and build on these approaches is not readily available to the research community. And this is exactly the problem that we are trying to solve with YETS. YETS st stands for Yet Another Traffic Engineering System. It is an open source traffic engineering fra framework that allows us to quickly prototype and evaluate a lot of traffic engineering approaches. By providing high level abstractions, it allows us to implement a lot of different traffic engineering systems uh, and the components of wide area networks, such as representing the topology and routing schemes. It exposes a modular interface by which we can implement different, portion, different parts of a traffic engineering system and compose them together to build more complex traffic engineering systems. And finally, to evaluate these uh, traffic engineering systems, it provides libraries and tools to generate different operational conditions and generate different kinds of traffic matrices. So with Yates, if we go back to our previous example where we wanted to analyze the performance of CSPF versus ECMP for different link weights, it is very easy to do that with Yates. 
First, we implement both the different uh, kinds of traffic engineering systems, for example, ECMP and CSPF in Yates. And then we can ask questions to Yates, like what is the expected link, link utilization with your current uh, topology and demand matrices? And Yates can easily analyze the performance and can report that, okay, in this case, in this particular case, CSPF will perform better than ECMP. Now, the key feature of Yates that enables it to achieve this level of expressibility is its high level and modular interface. This, this interface allows you to prototype a lot of different traffic engineering systems. And uh, we have tried to keep this interface as simple as possible while being generic enough so that, a, so that a wide range of traffic engineering systems can be implemented with the same interface. Let's look at an example of this interface. I won't go through all of them, but let's focus on this particular type. Of, which is scheme, and this, this type represents, represents a routing scheme for a traffic engineering system. A scheme simply maps a source and destination pair to a probability distribution over paths. And the weight of each path in this distribution it represents the relative amount of traffic that should be sent over that path. Similarly, this interface uh, shows, uh, this is the interface for a traffic engineering algorithm. And every algorithm should have an initialization function and a solve function. A solve function simply takes the topology and the current set of demands, that is a traffic matrix, and generates, an, uh, generates a routing scheme. So you can assume that as the demands change over time or as the, traffic, or as the topology changes because of failures and, so, and other conditions, you can repeatedly invoke the solve function uh, of, of your traffic engineering system and generate a new, uh, new routing scheme that can route around failures or can handle these changes in demands. Now let's like look at an example of how this modular interface can be used to compose different parts of a traffic engineering system. We'll specifically look at the SWAN traffic engineering system, which was proposed in SIGCOM 2013. And we'll look at a simplified version, which load balances traffic uh, dynamically over uh, paths or tunnels selected using K-shortest paths. To implement this, we start with two modules that we write using the high-level interface provided by Yates. One is the case shortest path module, which takes the topology and just computes multiple shortest paths between source and destinations. And the other is semi-MCF, which is a restricted version of the multi-commodity flow-based traffic engineering system. And it just load balances traffic over a static set of paths. So let's say we have implemented these two modules. Then we'll first we first have to compute the set of tunnels. So for that, we can invoke the initialization and the solve function in, uh, for the KSP module. And that will give us a routing scheme which routes traffic over K shortest paths equally. Then we initialize our semi MCF module with the, with the routing scheme that was generated by KSP. And finally, as demands change, we can repeatedly invoke the solve function of the semi MCF module to compute an updated routing scheme. And finally, once we have, this, we have composed these different modules together, we can let Yates perform, analyze the performance. And in this case, we see that this new traffic engineering system does improve the performance compared to the previous, previous approaches. So, so far, we have seen the software infrastructure that allows us to, that allows us to implement different traffic engineering systems. And in fact, we have implemented over 18 such traffic engineering systems in Yates. It also provides the tools for modeling different operational conditions. And finally, to evaluate the performance of these traffic engineering systems, we have two backends. One is the simulator, and the other is the SDN backend, which can be used to implement or to control your wide area network using the same implementation of traffic engineering systems that we just saw. So for, for a wide, for a, Simulator for the wide area network, it needs to be scalable, for, scalable to wide area network traffic. And Yates, uh, Yates aims, to, aims to achieve that level of scalability by abstracting away, from the, abstracting away from packet level interactions and looking at the macroscopic behavior or macroscopic properties of the network, for example, looking at aggregate link utilization. Let's look at the SDN backend a bit more in detail. So the SDN, SDN backend is based, on the, is based on frenetic SDN controller. The controller takes as input uh, the traffic matrices, or it can figure out the topology on its own. And using the same implementation of traffic engineering systems as that we saw earlier, it can compute the updated routing scheme. 
and it enforces this routing scheme using source routing. So it has to update the rules on the switches, on the STM switches, and it has to notify the end hosts that it ha the end host has to load balanced traffic over these paths. We have used this STN simulator to uh, verify the accuracy of, uh, of our, SD, of our uh, simulator as well. For this, we have emulated the Abilene backbone network, which consists of 12 nodes uh, on our hardware, hardware testbed as shown here. We implemented two routing schemes, one based on shortest paths and the other based on MCF. And we analyzed the performance using both the simulator and the hardware testbed. We again look at maximum congestion as a metric for network performance, and we, found, and we found that in both the cases, the values reported by the simulator and the hardware test bed match accurately. So finally, to conclude, if you aren't paying attention, this is, these are the main takeaways from, uh, from the talk. It is incredibly hard to uh, evaluate different traffic engineering systems on a level playing field, and Yates aims to lower the, lower the bar to perform credible T research. It provides high-level and modular uh, interfaces so that you can implement a wide range of traffic engineering systems and compare them on a level playing field. To evaluate these traffic engineering systems, Yates provide a set of libraries to, uh, to, to model different kinds, of, uh, different kinds of network scenarios. And finally, we have, uh, we have calibrated our simulator with hardware deployments to ensure that the results that you get from Yates simulator actually match those that you would see in production. And finally, um, we have made all the code for Yates open source. F feel free to check it out in the following link. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Um, first of all, very impressive numbers. I was interested in how to calibrate um, your simulator with the hardware to make um, accuracy approaching nearly zero, oh, one. Thank you. So. Uh, so the main point here uh, about, ma about uh, making the simulation results credible is that we don't need to look at packet level interactions in the, while simulating here. Because in the wide area network, you'll have millions of flows traversing the same link or traversing multiple links, which, multiple parallel links. So you can abstract away from packet level interactions and just look at the quantity of or the volume of traffic that's going. And for that, we use the fluid model to simulate traffic. And we find that, uh, you, that the fluid model is pretty accurate in modeling the performance of wide area networks. More questions? Maybe to jump back on this one, I was wondering, do you have an intuition why? Uh, I mean, if the bottleneck is in the one, shouldn't that TCP will adapt to it as well? And that you should actually see a drop in the demand as well? Because I think your point is that in the one there is so many there are so many flows that uh, yeah. if there is congestion actually uh, I mean it, it won't matter the the end host uh, so do you have an, more intuition on on why that happens right I mean in in case of wide area network it's not that just one traf one TCP tra TCP flow is saturating the entire link you will have like hundreds or thousands of different flows that are going through the same link and if one TCP flow detects this uh, congestion and reacts then it's not that all the TCP flows will back off at the very same time. So that, that's the reason why even if there's a bottleneck link, it's not that all the flows back, back off, but uh, we see the aggregate performance in which, which can be easily modeled using the fluid model. OK. So I guess it, it depends on the level of congestion we are talking about. I mean, if the congestion is really severe, then I expect like a, a lot of flows to start to back off, maybe. Sure, uh, even if a lot of fl flows back up, but if we are looking at the link utilization, that is going to be close to one. So that is what the simulator will report as well. Okay. And maybe uh, one last question. So I think uh, if I s so correctly, like Yates is based on functional programming. So yes, so the interface that I showed was in OCaml. Sorry, this one, yes. So, so do you have also bindings in Python or? Uh, not at this point, but yeah, we have, we have had requests for bindings for other languages. So we are working on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, let's thank him.